Hi everyone, this is Jillian from Jewish Workshops and AISH Webinars. It is a pleasure to be joining all of you today and we are extremely privileged to have Sarah Hanna Radcliffe on the line. Before we get started, I'd love to see who's joining us and where you're from. So if you could go to your question box, it's on the right hand side of your screen and just write your first name or initials and where you're joining us from, I'd love to be able to welcome you. Oh, so nice to see everybody here. Welcome Chava from Virginia and Eliana. Welcome Sandy from Connecticut and NP. Welcome FL. Welcome Sue from London and Josh from Brooklyn. AS from Brooklyn. Naomi from Toronto. Welcome Ruthie. Welcome Lee from South Africa and Nate from New York. Penny from Toronto. Catherine from Arizona. Welcome Shifra from London. Uh, Shoshi from Beit Shemesh, welcome T from Cleveland, and Tali from Israel, welcome Srili from Airmont, welcome Yudit from Brooklyn, D from Cleveland, welcome Ben from Jersey, Peter from Toronto, Karen from Chile, Rivka from Jerusalem, RS from Brooklyn, RL from Miami, Sarah from Lakewood, Michal from New Jersey, Welcome Rivka from Rehovot and Craig from Denver, uh, Gila from Montreal and Annie, welcome. Let me see, Esty from Silver Spring, Jackie from Canada, Leanne from Johannesburg. Wow, this is amazing. DF from Chile and Barbara from Brooklyn. Welcome Leah from Baltimore, Karen from Toronto, Frimi from Muncie, Bibi from South America, Hani from South Africa, Welcome SLJD from Washington DC and Devora from London, Chaya from Gateshead, Meira from Dallas, um, let me see Marina from California. Welcome Chaya from LA, Lisa from Texas, Beryl from Williamsburg. This is absolutely amazing. And we continue to have people flood in from all over the world. Welcome, welcome to all. I wish I could get to everybody. Uh, let me see if I can just get to a couple more names here. Welcome Miriam. Welcome Sarah from Carmiel. And oh, there are so many names coming in. Let me just say a huge welcome to everybody. It is wonderful to have you here. We are likely to hit capacity shortly, so please don't leave in the middle. I don't want you to be locked out. There is so much to go over today in this amazing introduction that we're about to share with you. This past winter, we invited Sarah Khanna to bring her expertise in parenting and relationships to our Jewish workshops community. And we experienced so much enthusiasm and appreciation through countless emails and phone calls that we immediately asked Sarah Hanna if she would return and offer her guidance and knowledge on one of the most challenging and yet fulfilling areas of our lives, marriage. So today, Sarah Hanna is going to introduce us to her unique insights and perspective on creating and cultivating a happier, healthier, and more connected relationship with our spouse. Make sure to stay on the line until the very end to hear about this one-time chance to join Sarah Hanna week after week for a full live online program at a special discounted rate for all attendees today. It is truly an honor to be hosting Sarah Hanna Radcliffe, a registered member of the College of Psychologists of Ontario. Sarah Hanna has been practicing marriage, parenting, and individual counseling for over 40 years. Sarhana is a well sought after lecturer on stress management, parenting, marriage, and emotional well being. And she is also a well known author of Raise Your Kids Without Raising Your Voice, The Fear Fix, Make Yourself at Home, and five other books on family life and emotional well being. Sarhana, we are so grateful to have you joining us today. Thank you so much for spending your time with us. I'm going to go ahead and pass the microphone over to you. How are you today? I am. Great. I'm so excited about this workshop, honestly. It's one of my favorite topics, marriage. <laughs> yeah. Are you ready for me to begin now? We are or? ready. Thank you. Okay. All right. Good. I'll tell you people why it's one of my favorite topics. Um, you know, marriage is one of the most difficult relationships and yet one of the most important relationships we can have. To me, it almost makes no sense to talk about parenting unless we're going to talk about marriage. And parenting is another topic that's so close to my heart. Um, but we have to provide homes for our children. If you are in fact married, you're already very successful. What you are doing is you are building a home in a almost homeless society now. People don't value marriage the way they did and therefore um, 
many, many children are growing up in single parent homes and don't have the opportunity to witness even the struggle. <laughs> and the struggle is important, as you'll see why when we start talking today. Um, but the, the fact that you're married gives your children something unique. And interestingly, the research shows that children who do grow up in married homes have an overall better statistical outcome on things that researchers measure with statistics. Okay, I'm not saying that um, children can't do well when they're from single parent homes, they certainly can. But overall, just the fact that you're married and providing that one roof over your children's head is a great accomplishment and a greater accomplishment in the world that we live in today. And also being married causes you to really grow. There's no way, you know, with you live by yourself, you kind of like yourself and, you know, you can put up with all your foibles and everything. And um, that's good, but we're here to really grow, to stretch ourselves, to accomplish something so that we don't end up leaving this world, let's say at 120 years old, uh, pretty much the same as we were when we were five years old or two years old or something. This is a, a journey we're on to get better, wiser, more compassionate, more elevated. And honestly, marriage either gives us a tremendous amount of pain and we just shrivel up or we climb that mountain and get to those kind of traits and characteristics in ourselves through the struggle itself. Now, of course, we don't want to struggle, okay? We all want um, the perfect marriage, really, right? We want the ideal marriage. Now, let's keep in mind that all ideals are um, stemming from archetypes. They're like up in heaven there, this, the, the concept of what would be ideal, which is always a state of perfection, harmony, wholeness, unity, like really love, like ideal is not of this world, unfortunately, but it is ideal, it's perfect, right? Um, and marriage, it includes concepts like um, unconditional love, serenity, again, the harmony and the unity, freedom from struggle and pain. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> it's like if they just, if it was just easy, if we had married the uh, perfect spouse, let's say, and then it just was easy because the, the perfect spouse is well behaved and understands us so well and um, makes us feel safe and comfortable and adores us and loves us, wouldn't that be something? Um, sometimes we kind of want to ditch the current spouse we have in search of that perfect spouse, but the little problem there is that uh, we human beings, we don't have that perfect quality, we're not there yet. Now, interestingly, um, our prophets tell us that the world itself will change and eventually this will be a, a spiritual planet where we'll have many of those qualities of the ideal archetypes that I just mentioned, where everybody will be enlightened and will be able to understand each other, even, um, what do you call it, um, in a clairvoyant type of way to see and to feel and to understand at the deepest level what everybody else is thinking and feeling, including the spouse, so that would be terrific. And there will be this harmony. And in fact, the way it's written is that there's a, a line in the prophets that says, the wolf will live with the lamb. And uh, I want to focus on that concept today because, you know, um, we can get a little bit of a touch of the perfection that is to come, but it's not for our time. Um, right now, there kind of isn't any wolf living with any lamb. There's, there's a, a lot of conflict, pain, and struggle. And you are not the only one who might be experiencing this, okay? And it's not just um, an unusual phenomenon. It is the normal phenomenon of, of married life. Um, so uh, wolves and lambs, and we assume that, of course, the um, our partner is the wolf and we're the lamb, doesn't that make sense, right? Um, are fighting every day, right? They're bickering, they're struggling, they're not, um, they're just not coming forward for each other. And instead of that conflict-free love, what we're experiencing, you know, instead of that mutual embrace, that oneness of heart, that unconditional and all-encompassing love and acceptance and understanding, what we have is this world type of love. This world, okay. Now, the nature of this world is that it's characterized by duality. This world is full of conflict and contradiction, of pain and suffering. Although, we're supposed to keep our eye on the good parts of, of our experience here. There's no denying that there are very hard parts. If not, uh, if we're not experiencing it personally right now, then certainly our friends are, our neighbors are, our children might be, our 
um, relatives and extended circle of people. You can't go too far before you find somebody um, who is really, really suffering. And you, you know, we don't usually have to go far at all. I can just you know look in the mirror usually, and um, and that's just here, you know, uh, in in your home or in your home circle. But of course, we know what the world is all about, and we can't be um, babyish about this. The fact is that this world is full of pain and difficulty and challenge. We can call it too, um, and certainly all our relationships, uh, relationships with everybody have a bit of this element of difficulty also. Um, nobody really gets it. You know, they don't can have a full understanding and that ideal state, that archetypal state that I mentioned before, we're just human. So we can't get other people that to that level and they can't get us to that level in most of our relationships. If you have a special, amazing bond with somebody, could be with a parent or a child or a sibling or a spouse, it could be. Um, this is a wonderful, wonderful and rare gift which you should cherish. But even then, there's always just a little bit at least of that human flaw. But most of us do not have this rare, rare, rare thing. We, we have is normal, normal. Um, so our work is actually to figure out how to deal with the dark side of life, meaning as far as it goes with marriage, the dark side of marriage, okay? Um, and to minimize and subdue it. That's what we're gonna do here. We're going to give ourselves a little bit of the future state of the world when even this world, the wolf that is darkness, um, negativity, even aggression, will live with the lamb that is that um, sweeter, compassionate, um, softer, more peaceful part of reality. We, those are two parts of reality, okay? The dark negative and the light positive. And they're in every person and they're in every relationship and they're certainly in every marriage. So um, this is where we are. And if you happen to be experiencing any difficulty in your marriage, then well, <laughs> welcome home to this planet. This is, this is exactly what you should be doing, having difficulty in marriage and in parenting. Um, because that is the name of the game here. Not that we're enjoying it. We, we wish it wasn't like this, but it's up to us to make it less like that. That's the interesting thing, okay? There's, it's going to be difficult. We have to find a way to make it more positive, more light, more of that um, love and unity, harmony stuff. It's up to us because the darkness will exist. There's no way to get rid of it at the time and space that we live in right now. There is no way to get rid of it completely. We cannot get rid of our spouse and find something a whole lot better in anybody else because of the fact that all human beings are flawed. I actually want to take a moment here for you to join me in where I'm thinking about this. If you could write in your chat box just a couple of the flaws that you have come across in yourself or in your partner um, or in other people's partners, what in what way are human beings flawed? I actually wrote a long list, which I'll read to you in a minute, but um, I want you to think about it. And it might be easier for you to think about your partner than yourself, but that's fine. <laughs> um, just give me a few things in the chat box and maybe as they're coming in, Jillian, you could read out, what are some of the normal common flaws that, uh, you know, dark spots, um, you know, issues that human beings apparently have. What are they? Sure. So it looks like people are writing yeah. in, my husband doesn't really pay attention. I'm not patient. Uh, selfishness, addiction, forgetful and messy. Um, we care mm -hmm. mostly just about ourselves. Impatience, judgmental, aggression, taking um, each other for granted. Lack of responsibility. Um, impatience, a lot of impatience, uh, defensiveness, yeah. <laughs> dishonesty. Um, I say okay when compromising, but repress, repress my real feelings of disappointment. Critical, judgmental, lack of empathy, tempers, selfish, anger, trust, self-centered, laziness, procrastinator, non-communicative, uh, lack of affection. There's no shortage here. <laughs> it just pours in, <laughs> no, right? <laughs> I could probably go on for a while. A self-oriented. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it does look like okay. there's a lot of impatience, uncommunicative, 
resentful. Mm -hmm. Hypocritical, I'll my list. negative. Yeah. yeah, yeah. These are good. I have I have a lot of those on my list too, but I'll, I'll read you my list just so. Um, and there's plenty more than what's on your list and then what's on my list because it's almost endless how flawed we can be. If I don't happen to mention a flaw that you or your spouse has, um, you know, I just omitted it, but it's, you know, there's lots more. So yeah, and some of you have mentioned some of these already. We forget things, we make messes, we do things wrong. Um, we make mistakes for sure. We're inept, we're incapable. We're scared, we're moody, we're angry, we're irritable. Um, I'm glad that a lot of you brought out the point about impatience because you'll see I'm gonna address that specifically today. Um, we're flawed physically, we're too, I don't know, lazy or we don't know how to do things. We're flawed emotionally, we're flawed intellectually. We can be immature, addicted, as somebody said, physically or mentally ill. Um, a lot of us are suffering from all sorts of um, emotional difficulties that make us difficult to live with. Um, we're, as some of you said, badly behaved, selfish, self-centered, self-focused, unable to um, reach out properly to give. We're judgmental, as you said, controlling and negative, uh, manipulative, aggressive, passive, passive aggressive, <laughs> grumpy, anxious, nervous, high strung, um, and otherwise not perfect. And because of these flaws, we end up doing flawed things like we hurt each other, we do disappoint each other, um, we neglect and abandon each other, we betray each other, we diminish each other, we misunderstand each other, and we fail to perform well in endless numbers of areas. And that's just to get started, right? There's just, that's how we human beings are. That's our wolf side. That's our dark side. That's our problem side. And all human beings have it. Um, so it's just in different combinations, you know, sometimes we think, okay, well, my particular spouse has the worst combination of that ever. Um, and sometimes that could be true. That is sometimes true. Okay. <laughs> but most times it's just, you know, trade them in, you'll get another spouse with um, another combination that's equally challenging to live with. I think um, some of you heard me say elsewhere that um, marriage is hard and has a very high divorce rate, um, still hovering around 50% for the last three decades or so, 60% uh, in cities, larger cities, uh, you know, so, and um, that's for first marriages, but second marriages where we traded in the first one, hoping to get a better model, that has a higher divorce rate. And third marriages have an even higher divorce rate um, than second marriages do. So it, it doesn't, you know, it's not like there's, Mr. or Miss Wright sitting out there waiting for us. We're going to have to do something in here in order to make this work. Otherwise, it's just a life of pain and suffering and misery. So we're, we want to get away from that. I said, well, you know, today we're going to live our best marriage. Um, our best marriage is going to be something that to a large extent, we're going to create independently. Okay? Like, um, so we have to, in order to create that best marriage. We do have to deal with this negativity. We can't pretend it doesn't exist. So we're going to have to deal with our flaws and our partner's flaws um, and the flaws in the marriage. Um, but the, and in some cases, by the way, divorce is the correct solution to dealing with flaws, but that's for the most part, not what is necessary. For the most part, for the normal marriages, um, we're going to be dealing with um, reducing minimizing or subduing, let's say, that wolf. We're going to, we're going to figure out how to deal with that wolf. Um, and when we do so, then we have that taste of the world that is coming down the pipe in the, in the future, okay? That perfected, ideal world. We're going to have a little bit of a taste of that in our own lives, in our own home, where the wolf and the lamb will live together, okay? Um, so the wolf being the dark and flawed side of either the personality or the whole marriage, um, and the lamb being the loving, compassionate, and friendly force within us and also between us. So um, there's three possible interpretations of, of um, the wolf shall live with the lamb that I'm going to go here, go with here. One is that we're going to have to subdue our own inner wolf. That is our own personal negativity, our own pessimism, our own judgmentalness, our own impatience, anger, resentment, um, pain, um, 
and all our flaws that have nothing to do with how we feel about the marriage, but just our personal flaws, we're going to have to um, subdue our own inner wolf. The second meaning of the wolf shall live with the lamb is that we're going to help subdue our partner's inner wolf because our spouse also has some version of flawship, um, negativity, problems, uh, difficulties in functioning and feeling and acting and behaving and communicating and in being a spouse and being a human being. And then we're going to have to subdue the negativity or the wolf within the marriage itself, within the relationship, the dark side of the marriage, we're going to have to subdue that as well. Um, so we're going to look at these three areas um, and we're going to begin with the first area, which is, um, so we're, we're going to look at is subduing the wolf in ourselves, our partner and a relationship, and we'll, we'll start with ourselves. But I do want to say that um, when it comes to relationships that are experiencing um, abuse, real abuse and or betrayal, um, more strategies will be needed than the ones that we're covering today. However, the ones that we're covering today are also part of it. I just don't want you to think that, oh, okay, we'll just do this and then dealing with um, serious marital crimes, as I call them, um, can be handled just by this. It's not, that's not the case. Um, and I just want to also say that serious marital crimes are just that. They are not every wrong or flawed behavior. So when I'm talking about abuse, I don't mean the fact that somebody has a bad temper. Um, most people's tempers are not uh, <laughs> completely what they should be. Um, so I'm not talking about somebody who yells or somebody who slams the doors, uh, you know, immaturely on occasion. Um, but, you know, when it's violent and or threatening, you know, you're scared for your life and things like that. So um, that for, for the normal misbehaviors, that people experience, what I'm saying today um, will get us quite a distance. And um, and spouses, like children, shall we say, have a lot of misbehaviors. Okay, you can say it shouldn't be that way. You could say, well, I married an adult thinking I was getting an adult. Well, you were just wrong about that. <laughs> you married somebody who might have been tall, but not necessarily taller than a child, let's say, but not necessarily um, free of the childish nature inside, okay? Like the, we're, we've got child parts that are acting in our adult body. So uh, we can stamp our feet and say babyish things and do all sorts of like irresponsible, childish, uh, immature, horrible things because of our baby parts. And also interestingly, because of our wolf, uh, which I will explain as we go. So getting back to um, minimizing our wolf here, um, what we're going to do is start with our own wolf, our own negativity, pessimism, judgment, anger, and all that stuff that I mentioned before. And that is in order to give power to our lamb, okay? Um, so that the forgiving, compassionate, and loving, and joyful flow, harmonious part of ourselves that's close to, uh, closest to godliness, that part can dominate our personality. Um, and when that happens, actually, when we, when we succeed at that, we find that we are infused with the qualities of the lamb, okay, which are very um, beautiful spiritual qualities that lend us to feelings of joyfulness and peace, tranquility, serenity, um, gratitude, and love. By, by bringing that lamb forward, we are soothing our own nervous system we're healing our own body. We're improving our own mood. This lamb is not a gift. <laughs> it's not a sacrifice to the wolf that we're living with. Um, this, this lamb is, needs to be the dominant part of us so that we can be our smartest, most physically healthy, most happy and content, um, and most elevated uh, self. And this, all that what I say here is not a, um, just like a great idea. It's all substantiated um, by uh, decades and decades of research that show that when we um, are living primarily in these lamb qualities, that's exactly the outcome we get. Longer life, a better quality of life, uh, more capacity to function at our highest level, intellectually, um, you know, cognitively, mentally, physically, everything. Everything, we heal faster. Everything is improved from bringing our lamb forward and subduing our wolf. Okay, so let's do this selfishly, shall we, for our own sake, okay? That's not 
all, yeah, that's all. <laughs> Say that. Okay, so um, we're going to learn to manage our inner wolf. Now, our inner wolf is not just an evil part of us, okay? When I say wolf, I do mean anything that has negativity in its nature, any part of us that, uh, let's say the three dominant negative emotions of fear, sadness, and anger, um, those, those emotions are just, a lot of them, if they're overdone, they're toxic for our body. They release chemistry that breaks down our cells and leads to disease, and that again is just a medical fact. Um, nonetheless, we have that wolf for a very good reason, um, many good reasons, but one of the good reasons is that um, it is there to protect our lamb, okay? And the, the way our wolf develops is it starts in childhood uh, where we're subjected to certain parenting episodes, like our parents are always correcting us and helping us, uh, well, they're trying to help us, but they may do it in ways which are more or less pleasant, um, sometimes very unpleasant. For ex Correction by itself is never pleasant, so just being corrected when we're being raised up, um, we're always being kind of pushed down a little bit, and it's not a good feeling. And uh, some of our parents, um, you know, might have done that in, in ways which were really painful. So there are uh, too much criticism, too loud or too threatening, too diminishing, things like that, in which case our wolf actually grows quite strong. And by the time we leave home, um, we may have a very protective wolf that in the essence says, nobody's ever going to hurt my lambikins again, okay? <laughs> Don't come near my lamb. Don't you ever criticize my lamb? Don't you diminish my lamb? You know, so the, the wolf is kind of standing around us, walking around in circles, always hypervigilant for who's going to hurt me, okay? Um, now, depending on our background, this wolf may be more or less hypervigilant, okay? If we came from a very severe negative background, we usually have a very, um, what do you call it, vigilant wolf accompanying us through adulthood, accompanying us right into our marriage, looking at this spouse going, yeah, you know, like it's, it's growling, it's walking around us, and it's always ready to jump. And hence, what I, we've talked about is one of the qualities of impatience, okay? Because this, this wolf is like a nervous guy. It's like, what are you doing to my lamb, okay? Did you just criticize or correct my lamb? You know, and then the wolf jumps and, and attacks whoever dared to do that. Um, unfortunately for us, if that's going on frequently, we're getting a lot of negative chemistry generated by our wolf. <laughs> so it's not good for us physically, too much adrenaline, too much cortisol. Negativity by itself is killing us slowly. We can't, it's not good, okay? Um, although it's accidental in this case because our wolf is trying to help. Um, but our wolf can also be destroying everything that we really want because if it's too hypervigilant, it's going to be attacking when it doesn't need to. It doesn't need to really go for the jugular of uh, people right now. Um, although this feeling may come back from childhood when we were truly helpless and small, we couldn't do anything. When we were attacked or when we felt attacked, uh, we just had to crumble. There was nothing we could do. But now the wolf is protecting us. It says, you know, you hurt me, I'll hurt you worse. And um, it will really try to hurt. <laughs> um, it won't accept, it won't just, you know, sit there. So um, by doing that, it unfortunately tends to destroy a lot of our most important relationships. It can destroy our parent-child relationship, certainly our marriage, um, even our friendships or our, our work relationships. You know, an uh, overactive wolf is a problem for us. But even a regular wolf, okay, can be a problem for us because the wolf, by definition, is looking for trouble. It's looking to make sure to protect you. and um, it tends to be overreactive. The question is just whether it's a little overreactive or way too overreactive. That's kind of it. Um, now, there will be, um, as Jillian mentioned earlier, um, a course of um, many weeks that follows this lecture today. And in that course, we're going to look at many ways of, sub of subduing our inner wolf and the wolf of our partner and the wolf of the marriage. <laughs> However, for today, we're going to start with what comes to our inner wolf, probably the most important technique that there is, and that is to befriend the little fellow. Let me explain how that works, okay? Um, when we feel this irritability or um, impatience or anger or um, stress, even anxiety, when we feel some negative emotion 
beginning to bubble inside of us. Um, maybe because our partner did something that triggered it. Um, then that is our wolf starting to pace. Okay, it's 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 getting worked up. Now, when the offender, the one who, this can happen from any situation to do with our child, to do with a, a stranger, to do with somebody driving in front of us, you know, like uh, any work or social or home situation. But today we're focusing on our spouse. So if our spouse is the one who is provoking that feeling in the wolf, that there's some danger there, we do have to decide whether to bring out the wolf, that is let him attack, or whether to subdue the wolf. Now, our main strategy and goal for almost all intents and purposes is to subdue the wolf. Okay, now, um, the reason why that's going to make sense here is unless we're living in a chronically violent marriage where uh, we're being truly physically threatened and we need that wolf to pour adrenaline into our system so that we can attack and uh, and run or flee or freeze or whatever it is we need to do that the wolf can can start that motion going for us, um, a life-saving kind of intervention, then, um, you know, if we need the wolf, for, that's what we need the wolf for. Let me put it that way. That is what we need the wolf for, to save our lives. Now, the wolf happens to feel like most situations are life-threatening. That's the problem. <laughs> okay. So, like, life-threatening here is, you know, you have a partner who's holding a a weapon in, in his or her hand and is life-threatening, then we need the wolf. And um, otherwise, we actually have another part of our personality that can take charge. And I'm going to call this part you. <laughs> you, meaning your most adult self, your wise self, your normal self that is governed by your cortex. Now, when the wolf is active, your um, animal self is in charge, okay? That means the amygdala and the lower brainstem and all your animal survival functions. If the wolf is let out of his cage, okay, you're going to be an animal and you're going to say things to save your life. But when there's no wolf, you know, when the wolf is subdued, sleeping, you know, then your cortex is mostly dominant. The cortex is our link to our higher spiritual soul. And that's where we do our thinking and our planning and our strategizing and our coming up with good tools and stuff, um, which we have plenty of. Uh, that's where we can communicate from. We can talk, we can listen. You know, we can do a lot of things with this cortex, okay? Um, but we can't as long as the wolf is in charge, right? We can only do it when the wolf is lying down. And so I said that for most occasions, we actually need to get that wolf to lie down, to sit at least, to sit, okay? <laughs> so we can actually feel it rising inside of ourselves. You know, let's say a uh, spouse has said something like, um, uh, you left your cup in the sink again. This is a simple little complaint, right? And our wolf goes, are you attacking my lamb? <laughs> okay. And... Um, and we tell that wolf, sit, I'll call you if I need you. And you're really asking yourself, is there something violent going on? Do I need the wolf to, um, to take care of this for me? And you're going like, no, the wolf can just sit, sit and look around, okay? Um, sit and watch and listen and, if, and be vigilant so that if something violent starts to happen, you can, can jump right in and help me out. But um, we're going to ask it to lie down in a state of alertness and not help us unless we ask for help. Okay? I can picture I'm patting my wolf here. It's like, sit, sit down, down boy. Okay. Yeah, I think I did live, leave my cup in the sink. Um, let me take care of that right now. Okay. From my adult self, my cortex, I can see like, yeah, in fact, my cup is sitting right there in the sink. No problem. Let me wash it, okay? But if my wolf is in charge of that little conversation, wow, you leave your cup in the sink all day and all night, so what are you talking to me about my cup for, okay? The wolf is like very reactive. Tell the wolf, sit. And as we get better at having our wolf sit, we will be more and more often in that state of the lamb, okay? Understanding, peaceful, compassionate, um, forgiving, tolerant, and all that stuff. Um, now, we have a lot of skills with which to deal with the actual problems that are happening between us and our spouse. Um, I know that, unless, in fact, um, 
you're sitting in your jail cell watching this webinar because you've been uh, incarcerated for your aggression, okay, unless that's the case, I'm sure that you have a full skill set already. Now, we are going to learn even more skills as uh, this course goes along in the next few weeks, but you have a pretty good set even right now. And I know that because um, you wouldn't uh, have a job, you wouldn't have uh, any friends, you wouldn't have a spouse. If you didn't have some skills, okay, like in order to get a spouse to sign up, a person to say, yes, I will spend the rest of my life with you, you used all those skills to get that person to sign on with you for life. Okay, you had those skills even when you were in your young 20s because um, you had to use them to get somebody to look at you and go like, yeah, you're a good bet. <laughs> okay, it's like, we have those skills. We just aren't using them when we're when we're letting our wolf run free. Our wolf is a maniac, okay? So, um, but we have those skills. And uh, we know how to problem solve and compromise and negotiate. We know how to speak very nicely. We know how to listen very well. We do all this probably all day for everybody else, okay? But our wolf is very threatened by our spouse. And so while we're using this great set of skills for everybody else, and in fact, uh, we usually say to our spouse, you know, everybody likes me except you. Okay, so there must be a problem with you. Actually, that's not what's going on. Okay? Is <laughs> Everybody likes me because I'm using my normal skill set with them all but when it comes to you my wolf is playing okay so that's what's going on so um so we do have this good uh skill set and what we want need to do is subdue our own wolf so that we can use it in our marriage and um and take care of ourselves that way um so our wolf is perceiving a lot of danger when no danger exists anymore okay it could be that in childhood we did feel a really keen sense of threat, threat to our ego. We felt diminished. We felt um, ashamed. We felt humiliated. Um, we felt squashed. We felt physically scared. We felt a lot of things, okay? Um, but now we're grown up and we can, you know, move the cup out of the sink with no problem, actually. <laughs> okay, it's like it doesn't have to do that to us anymore. But we have to get this wolf out of here. So we have to let our wolf know that we have a grown-up part that can deal with almost every situation. And this grown-up part can bring in outside help if we're having trouble deal dealing with it by ourselves. We, we hardly ever need the tactics of the wolf. We're going to tame our wolf. And moreover, um, our wolf needs to learn that we can actually tolerate frustration. That is... Um, not getting what we want. When we were a child, that was also really, really hard. We felt like if we didn't get it, our world was going to be collapsed. But with our new adult self, um, we get better at understanding that things are sometimes difficult. Things are sometimes unchangeable. Things are painful. And we will survive. And our wolf doesn't need to act like it's a dire emergency if I have this marriage problem. Like, you know, there's a million zillion problems but some couples actually go from problem to problem where each one goes is like a crisis like this is the one that's going to throw us over the edge this is the one that needs divorce this problem we fix that one we go on to the next one this one needs divorce we fix that one we go on to the next one this is our divorce point and it never ends because the wolf is always in a state of constant emergency life or death but we can say to this wolf actually it's not life or death it's regular things okay we have this problem we will deal with it Yes, that's finished, good. Now we have this problem, we will deal with it. Because we live in this world of imperfection and flaw and negativity and wolfness, we will always be dealing with something, okay? But we can deal with it with our adult parts. Okay, so we will call on our wolf when we need to tell our partner to, you know, tell the, tell the partner to sit down, you know, put that hand down, put that weapon down, step back, okay? That's when we're gonna use our wolf and otherwise we're going to use our self tame your wolf. Okay, um, here's an example, right? Um, I have a, just a little scenario where a husband is, um, uh, says he's going to pick up Junior from school uh, for his dentist appointment. And um, at 410, the dentist calls and says, uh, sits to the wife, um, is your child on the way? And the wife goes, freaks out, she goes like, while well, they were supposed to be there already and um they're you know where are they if they're not on the way and she thinks were they killed were they when did he forget to pick the, pick the kid up from school is it like what's going on and 
her wolf starts to pace. <laughs> she gets really worked up. She calls her husband and the wolf is panting and circling around, foaming at the mouth already, you know. And um, she does make a mental note somewhere that actually um, she's not in physical danger right now. And she can do better if her wolf sits and waits, okay? We're going to sit and wait. Was there a terrible car accident? Then we'll get the wolf on board maybe, but not yet, okay? So she tells the wolf to sit. Right? And she gets on the phone and she says to her husband, uh, so is everything okay? And then he goes like, oh, no, I forgot to pick Junior up, okay? Um, just take a moment. I want to pause here for a second. I want everybody to answer this question in your chat box. Did you ever forget something to do something, maybe something important? Please write yes or no, I did or didn't, okay? Yes, yes, of course, <laughs> many times, yes, definitely a million times, almost right. never, but yes, yes, okay. obviously. Okay, 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 <laughs> okay, right? Because that was one of our flaws, we forget. So he forgot, he got busy at work and he forgot. So she asks him to please call the dentist and to see if he can reschedule for later. You know, he's going to be a little bit late now and to pick the child up from school. And he's apologizing and apologizing. And she says, we all make mistakes. And why is she able to say that? Because her wolf is sitting. Maybe she put a muzzle on it. <laughs> Maybe she's got a leash on this thing, you know. And her wolf is sitting and she can say, you know, it's okay. I mean, we all make mistakes. Now, um, that's how that ends happily, and he feels like, oh, I've got the best wife in the world, whatever, and, you know, they live happily ever after. Isn't that great? Okay, <laughs> like now. But let's say that this guy actually has ADHD or something. Forgetting is his middle name. He is for sure it was going to be a challenge, and she had called him three times earlier in the day to remind him to get the kid, and still he forgot to get the kid, or he was late, or makes up some excuse about being caught in traffic, you know, all these things. And... Um, this is a repetitive thing. This is not just today. And now her wolf you know, is like, I'm not sitting. We're not putting up with this. And the wolf again is acting like it's a physical danger that we have to get in there and make sure this never happens again. Okay. Now, since this isn't happening to you right now, your wolf is probably not activated unless I triggered it accidentally here. Um, so can you just write in the chat box, if this was a repetitive thing, what is this lady going to do if, if she doesn't enlist her wolf to scream and yell and make a big fuss? What is she going to do? Can you just let's get a couple of ideas? Sure. Um, let it go. Accept that she married someone who's flawed. Do the job herself. Um, yeah. Okay. So I'll just, what I'm going to say here is that if our wolf isn't activated, our cortex is, and we can think, we can think about things like, yeah, he, he has got that condition, and so does my son, who I happen to love dearly, and I hope that he marries a woman one day who will work with him patiently and love him and not give him a lot of tasks that require remembering because remembering is his weak point, okay? He's not, he's not going to be able to do it. So um, we're going we're gonna to work around this somehow to the best of our ability. And then if he does forget, I understand it's not his fault. It's a brain glitch that he was born with, and he's doing the best he can, sweet guy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know, if we don't have the wolf on board, we can go there, all right? Now, um, what we're doing here is, is putting our attention on the good things. Our attention is that invisible spiritual quality of the mind and therefore quality of the soul. It is the nature of the lamb. We're bringing it forward so that more positivity, love, compassion, understanding, and all the high qualities of the soul are brought forward in us to heal and nurture us at the same time that it nurtures our spouse, at the same time that it nurtures our relationship. Okay, um, now, let's just see for a second, because I see we're running out of time. I don't want to cover his, his wolf and the marriage's wolf as well in the next uh, little while. So um, let's just see. So some doing the wolf, I just want to clarify, does not mean that we're going to be ignoring the problems in the marriage. It means that we're going to be addressing the problems in the marriage from the higher self and not from the wolf, okay? <laughs> from a place of optimism and a place of problem solving and a pl place of clear, clear thinking um, and loving feeling and compassion rather than from a place of judgment and negativity and pessimism 
um, in all that negative stuff. Okay, so we're going to come at the problems of the marriage from the right direction, and therefore we're actually going to be more successful in solving the problems of the marriage from that place. Um, so we're putting the wolf in its right place in the relationship. We are subduing our wolf. Now, um, let's see. For a second. Now let's go on to our partner's wolf. Okay. Our partner also has a uh, protective wolf. So, for example, um, if we go out and, and we're challenging our partner, we say, um, we say to our partner, um, I called you, you know, half an hour ago to remind you about picking our son up. How could you forget? Okay. <laughs> so next, what we're going to get here is um, our wolf is doing a little minor attack there. I mean, it's a reasonable question, but it's not at coming from a place of compassion. It's coming from our agitated wolf. and. Um, our partner's wolf will answer that question because our partner's wolf um, is there to protect our partner's lamb. Okay, that poor little lambykins that was, especially with a, let's say it was a guy with ADHD, that lamb is really fragile because it's been picked on by every teacher and by both parents and by all the siblings and every social relationship all the way through the person's life. So, um, you know, to start accusing a person who's always been struggling with some major functioning areas, you know, their wolf is whoa, gigantic. Right? You start poking at that wolf, even a little bit with your <laughs> little snarl, um, you're going to get a really big wolf lunging back at you. Right? So our job is to make nice also to the wolf in our spouse, to calm that wolf by speaking from a place of compassion and caring and understanding. Um, and to be careful about when we're going to make a critical remark, I'd like to be careful that we do have to make that remark and that it's going to be useful and to pick our battles very wisely and carefully and to do it from the cortex so that when we do it, we've got our best language skills in place, which we already have, by the way. Okay, I told you, you're already a very good communicator, although we can always get better. So um, sometimes giving the wolf a little bone to chew on keeps that wolf subdued. So if our partner's wolf is attacking us and we want that wolf to relax, you know, we could throw it a bone, we can apologize. So our partner's wolf goes, your cup is in the sink again, like it's some big emergency, right? And we throw that wolf a bone and we say, oh, you're right, um, let me get it out of there. So um, now that we're right, the wolf, you know, just lies down a little bit, okay? Um, it'll chew on that bone for a bit. And as we tend to listen to the wolf as it's ranting sometimes, acknowledging it, speaking softly, speaking slowly, slowly, you know, sometimes we can soothe an agitated wolf and just get it to lie down, <laughs> put its nose between its paws and go to sleep. Um, now, sometimes uh, a wolf is, our partner's wolf may be a little bit out of control and needs to be fenced in. Then we do need to use boundaries. There are other different techniques for different kinds of uh, attacks of his wolf, uh, different things that happen in our partner, we may need to respond differently. Um, but uh, so we do need to know how to um, set limits for a wolf, which is again something we're not going to go into a lot today. There are skills about how to put a wolf in a boundary, in a fence, and lock that gate so we're safe when we need to. Uh, I'm talking about emotional safety here. Again, uh, our wolf has got license to counterattack if we're in uh, physical danger, you know, but I'm talking about the sparring that is going to go on between wolves, where our partner has not managed to tame his own wolf or her own wolf. Our partner's wolf is rapid, <laughs> out of control. It's a crazy wolf, right? And so, but if we're, if we're, our wolf is down, we can still say to our wolf, just sit, and if I need you, I'll call on you. Because what might be happening in our partner is a barrage, a verbal attack that is like, oh, would be threatening if I was five years old still, but now that I'm a full-grown adult, I understand that that is a temper tantrum, um, that that person's wolf is in full force, protecting a very vulnerable lamb that's kind of crying right behind him. And, um, and we could just sit there and wait for the wolf to let off steam until it's exhausted and goes away. Sometimes we can do that when we realize what it is, okay? Um, because often it's not more than that. Now we can tell our own wolf during such times, sit, if I need you, I'll call, right? But most often, we don't need the wolf's help for this. Um, 
Now, if we want to really subdue the wolf in our partner, the way to go about it also is to bring out the lamb, okay? And the way to bring out the lamb, to um, engage the lamb, to have our lamb and our partner's lamb in the forefront is through a lot of um, lamb-like activities, okay? Like laughing and playing are functions of the lamb, not the wolf. So joking around, having a regular date night where we're having a good time and we're not allowing any, you know, difficult discussions into that time. It's a protected time. Um, taking vacations a little bit together, having quality time for a few minutes each day, even if it's only five minutes, but letting the lambs engage with each other is another way to subdue the wolf. Um, nurturing and complimenting each other, uh, learning how to bring out more love by taking courses, studying, reading books, and you know, um, working on the marriage together. Uh, in general, if we pay more attention to the lamb in our partner, then our partner's lamb will be more in the forefront um, of his or her behavior and the wolf will relax. Because if you remember, the wolf's job is to protect the lamb. And if you're protecting the lamb, because you're stroking the lamb all the time, like you're out there like having a good time with the lamb, celebrating with the lamb, seeing the lamb, seeing the goodness and so on, your partner's wolf tends to relax. Okay, So that's another way to deal with the, the um, uh, subduing the wolf in your partner. Here, I'm going to ask you another question. Remember earlier we asked, okay, what are some of the typical human flaws that we have? And I'm sure when you were thinking of the human flaws, you were thinking of your spouse <laughs> to some extent. Um, but I'm going to ask you this question now to put in the chat box. What are some of the typical lamb qualities that we all tend to have? Of course, think of yourself. I'm sure you have many. Um, but you can think of your spouse too, okay? What are typical, normal lamb qualities that people have? What is good about us? What is good about the average spouse? Could you please start writing that list? Let's see if that comes in as quickly <laughs> as the other list did. It sure is. So oh, good. Humor. good. Yeah. Kindness, yes, love, yes, yes, yes. Uh, smiles, favors, acts of kindness, playfulness, sense of humor, consideration, patience, generosity, compassion, care and concern, easy to forgive and forget, um, playfulness, forgiving, soothing, compassion, kindness, patience, soft spoken, gentle, generous, giving, Helpful, supportive, easygoing, affectionate, good listener, sharing, thinking of each other, gratitude, loyalty, empathy. These are great. Yeah, these are great. And you know what? They're all natural lamb qualities that we have. Okay. It's not the, we have those, but once we're having difficulty in marriage, our wolf goes after our partner's wolf and our partner's wolf goes after our wolf as if there's no lamb around, okay? So we must subdue these wolves so that these lamb qualities can come forward. We have them, our partner has them. In fact, other people may see that our partner has them and be interested in our partner. Other people may see that we have them be interested in us. Like, you know, people will like us because our lamb qualities come out in other settings. At home, the wolf is running around the kitchen and the living room and the whatever, you know, like, you know, it's terrible, right? Two wolves chasing each other around the house, terrible, right? But we have those lamb qualities. Human beings have those good qualities those godly qualities of giving and loving and understanding and forgiving and everything, um, we all have them as well as our flaws. We have those too. We're going to subdue the negative. We're going to tame those wolves and we're going to let those lambs come forward. Okay. So that is, uh, we want to, we want to uh, provoke the lamb in our partner, bring it out by letting our lamb interact with our partner's lamb. And everything good that we say and do brings out the lamb in our partner. All right, um, now let's just see what else I have. Um, And I just want to see, because we're going to get to the marriage here. Okay, the marriage. This is the, the third condition, right? We're subduing the, la the wolf in ourselves. We're subduing the wolf in our partner. And then we're subduing the wolf in the marriage, in the relationship altogether. Um, so this means that ideally both spouses subdue 
conflict and negativity within the marriage itself. Now, if we um, frighten the marriage, so to speak, with talks of divorce, um, not that we're divorcing, we just talk of divorce for, let's say, 20 years straight. <laughs> it's like we're constantly highlighting the dark side of the marriage, the pain problem side of the marriage. I mean, the rule about talking about divorce is that that's a one-time conversation that you have just uh, after you visited the lawyer and started to arrange for papers. And, you know, it's just like uh, maybe you had it one time before when you told your partner it's either, you know, counseling or I need a divorce. It's a one-time serious thing. The wolf should never be mentioning divorce, okay? And that's who tends to mention it most often, okay? Like the, the, the divorce conversation needs to come from the cortex. I have taken steps towards this. I have prepared it. This is the logical, necessary outcome after years and years of struggle and trying and advice and counselors and, you know, um, all kinds of spiritual input and everything that I wanted and needed to try to make this work, I've done. And um, the pain is overwhelming and divorce is the solution. Now we're going to have that talk from the cortex. But it's the wolf you know, who comes out, ah, who needs this marriage? I should never have married you. You know, I knew you're the wrong person. I should have married the other person. You know, I, I want a divorce. I want a divorce. I want a divorce for 20 years straight. That wolf is crazy. Okay, it's like, all right, the wolf is not allowed to use that word, right? So it could never, you know, the, the wolf's fan fires in the marriage. There's a lot of adrenaline going on with a wolf. It's an emergency life or death situation when the wolf is speaking. So it does that to the marriage. It's always hanging the marriage by a thread, okay? That's the behavior of a wolf. Subdue that wolf. So that we're talking about solving our problems and dealing with our problems and enhancing our love. Enhancing our love needs to actually outweigh dealing with our problems, okay? We, we have to have it be that we're such good friends and such good partners that we don't want to fight, okay? We want, to, we want to really have more fun together. That's what we really want to be doing. We're making peace and harmony our focus and our priority, not conflict resolution, right? So yes, but we actually can get closer through conflict resolution. I should say that too, because the right kind of conflict resolution, the kind where we're listening to understand, where we're trying to solve a problem, we come up with um, ideas and compromise, where we're making changes and where we're getting closer. That, that kind of conflict resolution always comes again from the cortex and um, it brings us closer, enhances love. But when your wolf gets involved in conflict, then nothing good comes of it. It's a destructive force. The wolf is darkness um, and destruction. So it's not allowed to do conflict resolution for you. Okay? <laughs> that, if, if the wolf tries to get in there, you put it down. You say, you know, you have to sit. I'm not being physically threatened right now. It's not your turn. It's not your job. I can handle this myself, meaning with my higher self, my intelligent self, the self that's linked to my cortex, my thinking self, my human self, not my animal self. My animal self does not have to solve my problems for me unless I need physical help due to a violent attack. Okay, that's when I need my animal self. So to minimize the wolf in marriage, to subdue it, we want to surround ourselves and protect the marriage with good uh, forces like positive marriage-minded friends. Okay, we don't want a bunch of friends who are egging us on. Like, what do you need that for? You shouldn't put up with that. Don't deal with that. You know, you, you should leave that guy. You know, like those kinds of friends um, are not marriage-minded enough for us. You know, we need marriage-minded friends, we need the right kinds of support, we may need professionals, um, but we're looking at the marriage from a healing, um, constructive, maintaining, working it through long range with the goal of living with the wolf, okay? Not getting rid of the wolf, living with it. Um, when we enhance, and interestingly, our own personal happiness and our satisfaction in life, what we are doing is we are um, beefing up our, fat, our, our little lamb. Okay? It's like we're, we're making our lamb um, stronger when we are more personally satisfied. Okay? So we are enjoying our life, regard, like sort of outside of the marriage. We're enjoying our friendships. We're enjoying our work. We're enjoying our hobbies. We're enjoying our children. Whatever we're enjoying, um, the more we are enjoying, the happier we are, um, the more our lamb comes forward and is able to interact in the marriage. Interestingly, the more negativity we have 
personally, like independent of our spouse. So we may claim that our spouse is the one who makes us miserable and causes all our suffering, but really, you know, happy people are not brought that low by their spouses because their lamb is able to bring up the lamb and the partner to a higher degree. And um, they have resources, ways of staying happy that keep the positive energy, the focus in the marriage. Um, so our own negativity, our own pessimism and depression and anxiety and all that stuff can actually, that bring, that's a dark force. Those are dark forces that um, give our wolf more power and then our wolf our marriage becomes wolf dominated because of our own personal state we need to be happy independently so another way to protect the marriage to subdue the wolf within the marriage is to enhance the lamb in ourselves um, outside of the marriage interestingly okay uh, so we want to continue also um, to support ourselves by learning more and more marriage skills just like we will forever be learning parenting skills and communication skills and healthy skills to help us um, just do better in life. You know, stress management skills and ways of being uh, calmer, stronger, more peaceful, more mature, more capable. This is an endless journey. We'll never finish it because we will always have our flaws. This is the nature of this world and the way we are now. We will not ever reach a state of perfection in this form. And therefore, we can continue learning and trying and growing and trying again and starting again and learning again and moving forward. And marriage is meant to be this lifelong venue for that kind of growth, okay? It's not like, oh, this isn't working out, let me try it with somebody else. That's not that's not gonna get us where we wanna go, okay? Because the, the growth has to happen in the marriage, through the marriage. Prioritizing this marriage and realizing that it's important also highlights the lamb and subdues the, um, the wolf by not saying, okay, well, my job is important, my friends are important, my children are important, um, my, my hobbies and interests and pastimes are important, and if I have time, I will say hello to you at the end of the day. <laughs> it's like, you know, it, that doesn't, the marriage has to be a focus in your mind to bring out um, the marriage is the merging and, and trying to find that, um, find that, that love, that uh, support, all the lamb qualities. So making marriage important, dedicating time to it, making sure that you spend private time together. Um, all those basic things are subdue the wolf. They very much subdue the wolf. Do you know that even having a date night once a week is a powerful way to completely subdue a wolf in marriage, the, the wolf within the marriage, okay? So, and that date night has to be totally lamb oriented. Um, okay, so those are some of the um, things that we can do to subdue it. And I want you to recognize, again, the value of the marriage itself, accepting the fact that difficulties are what we are here to be addressing. They're normal. If you have them, great. <laughs> You're married, that's fine. Be proud of yourself that you are married and you are, you are showing others that it's possible to still have this institution. You are inspiring other people um, that, that you are negotiating your struggle and that it's a struggle that can be negotiated and that we're not all too um, wolf oriented, that we just fall apart and cannot manage. Yes, it's a difficult relationship, but we, that we cannot manage this relationship is such a, a failure. We can manage it, okay? It's not always pretty or beautiful or happy or light. It's not always in every moment dominated by the lamb. The darkness is there, but the main force is that we are able to bring out the lamb in ourselves, the lamb in our partner, the lamb in the relationship, and we can keep going forward, okay? Um, and we can, like I said, show others that it can be done. Um, so we always, there's always ways to enhance our toolkit, to make it easier, to make us more successful, faster, etc. cetera. And uh, just tell me, uh, how many of you are interested, actually, if you're interested in, in learning more? Why don't you just say I am in the, in the chat box, just see how many of you can, you know, maybe be, join me as we explore this further over the next few weeks, okay? Um, and Jillian, anybody yeah, interested in further? Yeah, I am. <laughs> absolutely. You're yeah. for sure, definitely. So let me go ahead and tell you how this journey is going to continue. And of course, we're going to get, there were some amazing questions that came in throughout the class today. We were going to get to those as well. But let me first uh, show you how your journey is going to continue. Okay. 
So in this exclusive series with Sarah Khanna, she will guide you through six weeks of interactive workshops, including next week, starting on Wednesday the 26th, Ready or Not, explore the mindset and the skills that allow you to build a successful marriage, discover your weak spots, and learn how you can strengthen them in order to enhance your relationship. Followed by Friendship, Love, and Intimacy, the Unique Qualities and Challenges of Marriage. Discover how to create a relationship that nurtures you as you nurture it. Then Disagreements, Arguments, and Fights, How to Protect Your Marriage. Identify your favorite fatal communication flaws and learn how to avoid them. Learn how to negotiate conflict without conflict. In week four, we're gonna talk about bringing out the best in yourself and your spouse. Learn how to get your needs met and your wishes fulfilled without resorting to negative strategies. Then we're gonna talk about the family context, your marriage, your kids, your parents, and your siblings, creating your protective bubble. And finally, a two hour Q&A to get all of your questions answered in an anonymous forum. Each ongoing class is going to be live and interactive, allowing you to get your biggest questions answered and remain completely anonymous if you choose. They will all take place on Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Israel time. And our first class, as I mentioned, starts next week, Wednesday, July 26th. But don't worry if you can't attend a live class, a recording is always gonna be available to you the very next day in your own personal membership area. And you'll be able to listen to that and download it at your convenience. So Sarahana, can you just give us a little bit of a sneak peek into what next week's class is going to be about? A sneak peek. Tell this. What was week one again? I don't have the sheet in front of me. Just tell me about the love um, part. Just read it again. Yes. Week one That's is okay. um, exploring the mindset and the skills that allow you to build a successful marriage, ready or not. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm remembering what next week is now. Yes. And um, this will be. Uh, I don't know if I want to give a sneak preview of it. I'll just say that it'll be very enlightening. How's that? Okay. Like. It'll be it'll be a way for you to assess yourself, um, your partner and your marriage, and really um, find out what needs to be strengthened. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave it at that. I don't I don't want to give it away even. Okay. Okay. Thank <laughs> All right. you. Mm -hmm. In addition to these live weekly interactive sessions, you'll also get Sarah Khanna's full five part series on how to overcome stress and create the life you want. In this series, you'll discover how to successfully cope with stress, escape the burden of hopeless exhaustion, and live a happy, productive, and upbeat life. Plus, a seven-part series on From Trauma to Healing, practical tools to heal emotional scars from the past and rejuvenate your soul. You'll also get anger, uh, breaking the cycle of family anger. Anger is a normal emotion that everyone experiences. However, when poorly managed, it can cause unnecessary pain and suffering for the whole family. So you'll learn how to help yourself and your family manage, heal, and respectfully express frustration, upset, rage, and all other shades of anger. Plus, uncovering happiness. Discover the best path for your individual journey to overcoming disappointment, sadness, and feelings of hopelessness, and uncover your unique potential, self-worth, and strength. And finally, an extra seat in the course for a friend or family member, not only giving you the opportunity to share this course, but also the ability to embark on this journey in cooperation with a loved one. So as you can see, Sarah Khanna will really be walking you through all aspects of marriage and family relationships. Plus, the bonuses will give you an opportunity to really delve into yourself and find strategies and solutions that will help you in your marriage and in other relationships as well. Dealing with stress, dealing with finding your happiness and your unique potential. Of course, healing past traumas is always really important for us to be able to bring our lamb side out. Um, you'll also have one-on-one -on -one support throughout this program and we'll have the unique opportunity to get your personal questions answered in each of the live classes. Plus, you'll also have that sixth class, which is a full hour to a two hour Q&A. Um, of course, again, as I mentioned, if you can't make it to those live classes, you'll be able to email us at any time with your questions so that we can send them to Sarah Khanna ahead of time and she'll be able to address them in the classes so that you can listen to the answers when you listen to the recordings. 
Most importantly, by investing in yourself and your marriage now, you'll discover how to restore and nurture your emotional and physical bond so you never feel lonely, unloved, or unsatisfied in your relationship. You'll be able to eliminate common communication barriers and turn blame, shame, and guilt into open, honest, and productive conversations. Discover how to bring out the best in yourself and your spouse by understanding and appreciating the unique qualities you each contribute to the relationship. Break the destructive habits that lead to resentment and anger and build a respectful and unified home. And prevent the deterioration of your intimate connection and reignite the passion and desire in your relationship. An opportunity like this rarely comes along, but we listen to all of our members' requests, and together with a one-of-a-kind mentor, Sarah Khanna, we are offering the guidance you need and deserve for a highly reduced rate. Plus, to make it accessible to everyone, we are also offering payment plan options when you register. So today you can become a basic member and get the six-part series of Living Your Best Marriage for only $347, or you can become a platinum member and get the six part series plus all of the additional bonuses, how to overcome your stress from trauma to healing, breaking the cycle, family anger, uncovering happiness, and an extra seat in the course for a friend or family member for just $4.97. As I mentioned, when you get to the page, I'm gonna share the link with you in just a minute. When you get there, you'll have an option to also use payment plans so that you don't have to pay all at once. Um, so let me go ahead and get that link over to you now. It's www.jewishworkshops.com forward slash best marriage. Just that one word. I'm going to let me put it right there on the screen for you. I put it in your chat box as well. You can actually copy and paste that out and into another browser. So you don't have to leave the webinar. You can continue to listen. We're definitely going to get to some questions coming up. Um, but you can put that into a different browser. Go ahead and secure your spot and take advantage of this unbelievable introductory rate that's only available for the next 24 hours. So I want to make sure that you can get in now. Um, copy and paste www.jewishworkshops.com forward slash best marriage and um, choose whichever payment plan option is most convenient for you. Plus, when you click to register now, you'll also be um, immediately redirected to a additional bonus after you register, uh, and that is for Sarah Khanna's unbelievable parenting program. So, there are so many different things that you can enjoy today. Please, when you are registered, come back to the chat box and just put your name or your initials and the words I'm in so that I know that you're registered and I can welcome you to the community. Uh, I'd also like to see how many spots are available. We need to keep this as intimate as possible. We have 100 spots right now that can be filled. Um, so come on back and let me know when you've secured your spot and taken advantage of this special offer. If you're having any difficulties registering, of course, please come back and just put your name and your telephone number into the chat box. We will give you a call as soon as possible to make sure that we can help with the registration. Sometimes uh, the site gets so backed up when there are tons of people going at once. So just come back and put your name and telephone number. If you're having any technical difficulties, we'll give you a call and help you register right away. So I'm gonna go ahead and get to some questions as people are signing up. And I actually see that we have our first, um, our first new member. Welcome, Rivka, it's so wonderful to have you. That is great. Please, like I said, come on back and just let me know, write the words I'm in. This is all very exciting and we'd love to be able to welcome our brand new members. Um, in answer to your question, Chava, the classes are all taking place on Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Israel time. Um, and again, as I mentioned, if you can't make it to those live classes, there will be recordings available to you. So don't worry about that. And okay, let me get to some of the questions. We had some questions come in ahead of time and we've also got some great questions that came in during the class. If you still have questions, come on over to the chat box and let me know so that we can get to those um, too. Okay, um, 
Sarah Hannah, we had a great question come in um, during the class, and you were talking about how we all have the skill sets available to us, especially, you know, if we have a spouse, if we have other relationships, we have jobs. Um, why is it so hard to use our skill set when it comes to our spouse? In our intimate family relationships, um, we experience the greatest sense of threat. Okay, so we, it feels with our spouse like what happens there feels like life or death somehow. So when our spouse says, you know, you left your cup on the, in the counter or in the sink or whatever, that obviously is a, not a threatening question or comment. It's like, yeah, I did, right? But um, it feels like uh, it's a personal attack, an attack on the soul. Uh, this, as I said, can harken back to childhood where we had um, as a child, we have to endure a lot of correction and criticism, and we're vulnerable. Um, in that growing up process, I think we all develop a bit of an allergy to um, to receiving negative feedback that can affect us to varying degrees when we're older. So um, the the wolf, that protector part of us, is like not going to tolerate any any more of this um, wounded feeling. But only somebody who's very, very close to us, who can really raise that sense of threat, uh, will be greeted by our wolf. And that is typically our spouse, the, the, the most threatening, ironically, the most threatening person in the world, who should be our safest uh, cornerstone, our, our most comfortable, um, loving part. That's the part that, um, you know, is uh, so threatening to us. So, um, uh, not part, sorry, person um, who is so, so threatening. So, um, I don't know exactly how that happens, why it happens, but there it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, it looks like some people are having a little bit of difficulties with their. Uh, with technical difficulties. So as I um, just want to remind you, um, please just come on back and put your name and telephone number. Thank you so much, um, RR. We will get to you as quickly as possible. If anyone else is having trouble or has any questions, just come on back and let us know your name and telephone number. Um, and then of course, if you're in, let me know too with your first name or just your initials and the words I'm in so that I can go ahead and welcome you too. Uh, let me actually get to some of our brand new members. Welcome, Hudit. Welcome, Tali. Welcome, Saul, Sarah, and Rifka. Again, wonderful to have everybody here. Um, okay, as I mentioned, it looks like some people are asking again about exactly what's included. So let me go ahead and get to that. Um, I want to make sure that you can secure your spots, of course, and we will also take some more questions uh, that are coming into the chat box. So let me just run back through here. The entire uh, Platinum package includes, as I said, six full weeks of interactive live classes with Sarah Hanna. That sixth class includes a two-hour Q&A so that you can get all of your questions answered. I know we're going to get to as many as possible today, but throughout the course, you'll have your opportunities on each of the classes, and then that two-hour Q&A will help as well. You'll also get a full five-part series on overcoming stress. Um, a seven-part series on practical tools to heal emotional scars from the past. There's a, uh, a course on breaking the cycle, family anger, and I know that that was something that we saw a lot about when people were typing in, uh, you know, what were some of the common themes with different wolf uh, attributes. Anger was definitely in there. Um, I saw a lot of people who said, you know, criticism. So we'll really learn how to be able to handle difficult situations um, and help ourselves, our spouse, and our children manage, heal, and respect respectfully express this frustration, upset, and rage. Plus, you'll also get uh, Discovering Happiness, a special um, way to discover the best path for your individual journey to overcoming disappointment, sadness, and feelings of hopelessness so you can uncover your unique potential. And of course, this extra seat in the course for a family member or friend, and that does not include this, your spouse. If you and your spouse would like to take the course together, that would be amazing. If you're taking it on your own, that works too. But this is an additional seat in the course. So um, oftentimes when we offer this as a special bonus to people, um, 
women bring their daughters or their daughter-in-laws. Um, sometimes, you know, you give it to your mother as a gift, a sister, a friend. It's really nice to have other people in the community um, taking the class alongside you. So all of that is going to come to the Platinum membership for $4.97 today. Just for the next 24 hours, you get that additional $100 off. Um, or you can become a basic member and get the six-part series um, for $3.47. And again, with that additional introductory discount, you're saving $50 just by joining today. So um, come on over and let me know that you're in. And if you have any technical difficulties, just put your name and telephone number. And Sarah Khan, I'm going to get to some more of these questions that are coming here too. Um, we had a number of questions come in about criticism. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we were talking again about trying to subdue the wolf and bring out the lamb. What should we do in situations where, in this case, it looked like the, her husband was constantly criticizing? At what point do you not swallow it? Or at what point do you not remain calm? It's not, she, she specifically said, <laughs> it's not, that that wolf out. <laughs> she, knows it's, she knows it's not abuse, but it can certainly um, get on somebody's nerves, I would say. I think this brings um, to, to light the fact that in subduing the wolf, we are actually not um, killing it. <laughs> We're not getting rid of it. Um, so let's say our partner's wolf, uh, which happens to have a very uh, judgmental, critical side, um, we are going to do our best to subdue its impact in the relationship. And at first, let's say in the early years that we're dealing with this, um, we might try to listen to the criticism. We might try to address it. We might try to speak about it. We might try a therapist. We might try another therapist. Let's say 10 years have gone on and we've been, you know, using our cortex and our lamb parts to, um, you know, highlight the positive side of the relationship and to minimize, um, this, but it's getting on our nerves very badly because chronic criticism um, is wounding. It's, it's really painful to receive too much of that stuff, no matter what kind of background we came from. But certainly if we were came from a critical background, it's all the worse, but no matter what kind of background we came from. So um, it really is a problem. And let's say we've been working at it for 10 years and um, it's not going away. Okay, now people have been married, you know, for decades, which is the idea that we should actually, you know, one decade, two decades, three decades, four decades, maybe we live to 120 together till old age, um, you know, five decades, six decades, right? They have learned that some things don't change, right? So let's say in the worst, first of all, in, in most cases, when you work on something for 10 years, you actually do make a little progress, okay? <laughs> But there are some things that, for whatever reason, don't get better. There really are some things like that. And part of the wolf-lamb dynamic is, for the wolf, this is an unbearable crisis, a feeling of, I cannot tolerate. Um, it is, again, life-threatening. It is beyond, uh, I've got to get out of here. I've got to kill, attack, run, flee, whatever, all that. Um, crisis kind of uh, feeling and thinking about it. That is the wolf's response to something, a problem in the marriage that is not going away. Um, and I'm talking here now about criticism, not about violent attack or um, betrayal with a, you know, infidelity. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about the normal bad behaviors that flawed human beings have, right? So in the, um, part of the personality, I've kind of got the wolf and I've got the lamb and I've got this part that responds um, called the self, you know, the, the, higher, the higher self really, um, which may use lamb qualities. Um, this higher self is the one that's subduing the wolf or utilizing the lamb, but it's still an independent free will kind of part of ourselves. It's our response to the challenge that has been put before us. So um, that part may not um, like the criticism, but that part well, won't, well, I won't like the criticism, okay, it's awful, but that part may find, um, if after 10 years nothing else has worked, um, may find a way to not absorb it. It's just so that it's not life threatening. It is like um, an annoying, disappointing feature of this relationship. Um, but um, 
you know, I kind of drown, drown it out or I turn it around, I reinterpret it, I do something to it. And I would only do that after 10 years, let's say, or not always 10 years, maybe two years, whatever it is, of really working with this thing. But not all flaws go away. But even if they don't go away, what I'm saying is that um, for the most part, they're not life-threatening. They are simply um, uh, uncomfortable, annoying, disappointing, frustrating, hurtful, saddening. They're not great, but we have that part of this world. If you think you can get 100% perfect out of your spouse, think again. It's not coming. It's not coming right now. Not until the whole world changes and all of us become completely perfect. That's not for now. So sometimes it's too bad. But there are uh, ways of learning to cope with it that maybe we'll get to exploring in the course. Excellent. Thank you so much. I um, I see that Bracha was asking, um, I need step-by-step -step guidance because I know I need to tell the wolf to calm down, but it doesn't always work. Will this course be really practical? <laughs> um, when we have more tools, I don't know if you happen to take my parenting course, but if you did, you know I'm very, very tool oriented, like what to do. Here is the step-by-step -step technique. The more things you have like that for parenting and for marriage, um, the more effective you can be with your wolf. Just let's say, I'll give you a clear example in parenting. Um, you may have a desire not to yell at your kids, let's say, right? Uh, having that desire without the toolkit will not work very well with an active wolf. So the wolf in parenting also comes out, says the kids are making noise. I've asked them to quiet down. They're not quieting down. I'm starting to feel helpless. My little lamb is crying and my wolf comes out and yells at the kids, okay? To be quiet, it like, scares the wits out of them with its big bangs, <laughs> its, its claws, its, its claws, its teeth, its whatever, you know, ugly face. Um, and now they're, that worked, all right? The wolf took care of it. Um, I had the desire not to yell at my kids, but what could I do? I couldn't get them to be quiet, right? Now, if you knew what to do so that you could get them to be quiet, your wolf wouldn't have to run in to save your little lamb. And that's the kind of thing that um, the marriage course is going to give you such a full and complete toolkit that you won't need your wolf to protect the lamb. You'll know how to deal with what you need to deal with. And your wolf can just snore through the whole thing. Just, <laughs> just, just lie down at your feet and snore. That's what we're hoping for. Great. Thank you. Um, let me go ahead and just welcome our brand new members. Tamar, welcome. So nice to have you. Welcome, DZ. Welcome, SR. Welcome, Ahuva. Excellent. It's so nice to have all of you here. Um, we had another question that had just come in. Sarahana, if only one spouse is willing to start working on the marriage, uh, will this still work for you? Uh, improving and hopefully connecting people? Well, <laughs> one spouse is certainly better than no spouse is working on the marriage, isn't it? But one spouse um, has a lot of power in the marriage. Um, what's Michelle Wiener Davis wrote a book a long time ago for, um, for you to help yourself if your partner won't go to um, counseling. I forget the title of it, but it was a great book with showing the power of one person to change all the interactions in the marriage. Because what normally happens is two wolves attack each other and it is a bloody fight and it's an awful thing. Um, but when we have um, a very, a cortex and a crazy one, <laughs> the wolf, the animal, um, the cortex can be very, very powerful and um, can really change the dynamic and, and help that the, your partner's wolf be subdued and so that you can meet your partner's cortex and do better. So absolutely this tremendous power in one person subduing their own wolf and allowing their uh, best skill set to impact positively on the relationship. Obviously the ideal ideal is for two spouses to be working their hardest, but that's okay. That just doesn't have to be like that. Just we'll get as far as we can go. Great, thank you. And I hope that answered your question. Um, 
As we are winding down here, I'm going to try to get to as many questions as we can. There are a number that are still coming in. I do also just want to remind you, um, spots are filling up quickly, which is fantastic. But please just come back and let us know that you're in. I'd love to still be able to welcome you. And again, if you're having any technical difficulties or have specific questions, please put your name and your telephone number right into this chat box um, so that we can make sure to give you a call. I don't want to miss out, um, but once the webinar is closed, unfortunately, I can't get that information. So just go ahead and put your name and number in now, and we will be happy to give you a call. Um, oh, welcome, Rifka. Excellent, you're in. I think we have three Rifkas now, but it's good to see you, or else I've already welcomed you, but I wanted to say welcome again. Um, okay, let me just see. Um, yes, DE, you're asking if two spouses can listen to the course from different locations, um, if somebody's traveling, absolutely, of course. Again, uh, the price is per couple, I should say, you know, if one spouse wants to listen, if both of you want to listen, um, it's open to your household. But in the Platinum Package, the additional seat is anyone um, in addition to you and your spouse. So you can invite a family member or friend to also be able to take the course and they too get all of the bonus classes um, except for that extra seat. They are the extra seat. Um, okay, so let me get to, there were some questions that came in before the class even started. Um, and it was, uh, let me see. Here we go. Um, Sarah Khanna, how do you deal with a relationship that's lacking intimacy? Um, there's many, many aspects to a relationship. And we're going to um, remember all the, all the way through that uh, we're not getting the full ideal archetype package. So something will be missing, okay? Or many things will be missing. Um, I'm not sure what you refer to here as intimacy, but let's say physical intimacy, just for example, um, because there's emotional intimacy as well, right? There's, but let's, let's say for a moment that the physical intimacy is lacking and um, in quality or in amount or in something, um, and it's a problem in the relationship. Some people will tell you, oh, well, then you don't have a marriage. You know, like, I wouldn't say that. It's, there's many aspects to a marriage, and you will be missing something. It's like saying, well, you know, if we don't have, um, I, well, I, say I would put it beside a lot of other things. Like, I, in other words, it is not impossible to have a wonderful relationship where that part of it is very weak. Just like um, you could have a very good relationship, but the, uh, what other parts of it, um, I don't know, planning things together, whatever is, uh, you know, horrible. You can never get anything off the ground. You can't, you know, um, selling house, renovating or moving or taking a vacation. All these things are very difficult for you as a couple. It just doesn't work. That doesn't work in your relationship. That's a weakness because it makes you stuck. But does that mean you can't have a marriage? Um, I'm not saying that's exactly the same as lacking in intimacy. There are different things, uh, different weights we might give. But... Um, could you be happily married to somebody who doesn't heal from a, a bad temper? Well, when that temper, that a bad temper is, is maybe closer to this because it's an important thing to be uh, pleasant <laughs> and to have good communication skills and to not scare the wits out of people in your house. But when I say bad temper, again, I'm not talking about somebody who's actually hurting anybody. I'm talking about somebody who, whose wolf is very uh, poorly behaved, right? So, um, it's unpleasant, it's hurtful, it's disappointing, it's unfortunate. Can you still have a good marriage? Actually, you could, okay, depending. I'm not saying now if, if you're having, um, you know, uh, screaming matches or whatever it is every night that you could, no, but <laughs> I, I, I'm having trouble comparing things. All I'm saying is that, yes, you can still have a good marriage and you can work on it. Remember I said we might work 10 years on getting a person to, um, yeah, develop a certain capacity, a skill, or whatever it is, and then give up on it. Um, you might work, you know, 50 years on something if you can, you know, want to. There's no point at which you have to give up necessarily. Um, although in some cases, it does make sense to give up on something. We'll explore all of those things as we go forward. But um, you can continue to work on it. You can continue to hope for improvement. You can continue to have a wonderful marriage despite that area of weakness because wonderful marriages have areas of weakness, okay? If your marriage has several areas of weakness, it's a normal 
good marriage. That's how it is. Okay, There's nobody having a, a, a perfectly blissful time here, no matter what it looks like to you. When you see them smiling out on the street, that means nothing. Okay, So don't fall for that. Right? And people's marriages are very private and very complicated because people are complicated and complex. Thank you so much. Um, kind of, I guess, as a little bit of a follow up, we have someone, um, actually, several again, people. When you feel like you are always acting like the lamb and you are the one apologizing, you're the one that's subduing, you're absorbing your spouse's rage or um, criticism again, what do you do? Um, to keep yourself from feeling angry and resentful? And how do you get beyond those feelings so that you can continue to be the lamb and hopefully bring out the lamb in your spouse? Yeah, although um, the, the lamb has qualities of passivity and serenity, um, that is not the part of us, if you were following along closely, that is not the part of us that is doing the problem solving in marriage. Okay, we have a wolf part that is inappropriate, but our lamb part is not doing it either. Okay, like we are uh, drawing in lamb qualities so that we may have more patience and we may have more compassion and we may have more understanding, but um, it is the self using the cortex that is handling uh, marriage problems. So a passive response to um, difficulties in marriage is a, is a wolf food, okay? <laughs> if you want to feed your wolf, all you have to do is keep swallowing and swallowing and swallowing. And what you're doing is your, your wolf is sitting in there eating and eating and eating until it's big and strong. It's going to really knock something down. It'll either kill you from the inside or destroy your marriage from the outside eventually, okay? Passivity of that kind is dangerous. I didn't say we're not solving problems. Don't get me wrong. Uh, the, the, we're not using the lamp to solve marriage problems, okay? We're using the cortex. So if our partner is, in fact, um, hurting us in some way, not of the violent, no, you know, um, life-threatening way, but in the emotional way that most spouses do hurt each other. We must address this using the skills that you'll learn in the class, okay? <laughs> if you don't have those skills now, come to the class, um, you know, because, yeah, we're not swallowing nothing, okay? <laughs> if you swallow, your wolf is eating. Keep that in mind. Great. Thank you so much. Okay, um, it looks like we've got time for just a couple more questions here. I want to again um, answer, I think sometimes I go very quickly in the beginning. I tell everyone about the course and then it kind of gets uh, pushed to the wayside. So each of our classes are live and interactive. Um, it's a six week course starting this coming Wednesday, July 26th. All classes are gonna be Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Israel time. I realize that of course, we can't always make it um, as easily accessible to everyone. Everyone has different schedules. Some people can make it at 12 and some people can't, but that is why we always uh, also offer recordings of every session so that you can listen to it and download it at your convenience. Once you become a member, you have access to these classes for a lifetime. So you can listen to them, re-listen to them, take notes, share them with your spouse, um, discuss them with your spouse. But as I said, we do our best to make it convenient for as many people as possible. Possible, and I'm sorry that if uh, the timing isn't great for you, we do have those recordings available. I realize also someone had mentioned it's not the same if you don't come live. Um, that's okay. We can still take questions ahead of time. You'll be able to listen to the classes. And if you had a question regarding that that you want to be answered, just send it to us at jewishworkshops at jewishworkshops.com. We'll send it over to Sarah Hanna, and she will do her best to then address it on the next class so you can listen to those um, answers for yourself. Um, in regards to the, um, the payments, let me go back there again. Um, the basic membership is $347 and the platinum membership is $497. Um, that includes all of the additional bonuses plus the extra seat so you can invite someone else to join in the program as well. And there are payment plan options available when you get to uh, www.jewishworkshops.com forward slash best marriage. You'll see a big page with all of the details on there as well. It'll show you all of your classes. It'll show you 
everything that you get. When you click on the register now button, it'll immediately redirect you to an order form and that gives you payment plan options that you can choose for whichever is convenient for you. You can pay in one payment, you can pay um, you know, in three payments over three different months. So we're trying to, again, give you as many options as possible so that you can join and be comfortable uh, with being a new member. I think that that was everything. Um, Um, is Sarah Hanna going to answer privately all the questions that I have? Um, you are absolutely going to remain anonymous if you choose. Um, you can come into the course and during the classes, write in your questions just as you're doing here today. Um, we will not mention anybody by name. The questions will be read out and Sarah Hanna will um, go ahead and address those. If you have questions and you're not making it to the live class, as I mentioned, just email those ahead of time. And again, we can keep that anonymous. Um, okay, so let me get to just um, a couple more of these questions that have come in throughout the class. Sarah Hanna, I know that we discussed um, some of the techniques and things that we're going to be using um, in order to deal with bad habits, but what do we do when we're in a marriage and we certainly can see some of the good qualities <laughs> in our spouse, but some of those bad habits are really in the forefront of our minds and they're kind of taking over. And it is, um, it is something that's affecting several of the people who had actually written in. Um, I don't want to give too many details so that people, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just so say that that people don't know, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a common problem that, you know, in my uh, clinical practice also, uh, it comes up quite a lot. Um, I'm just going to think if anybody complains about a woman's bad habits. I hear it a lot from women complaining about their husbands for some reason. Um, you know how kids always don't always like a bath or don't always want to brush their teeth. Apparently, a um, fair number of men that uh, have that problem, much more than women, although I'm sure there's women out there also who, uh, just for example, in terms of a bad habit, um, just don't have the patience or have the sensory issues that make having um, keeping clean and keeping fresh and keeping you know uh, attractive um, in that way is a challenge for them. That's one bad habit that comes up. But uh, I'll just work, talk about that one for example, um, because there's many other bad habits. So you know we can include things like um, you know smoking or the way a person chews their food or um, all sorts of so-called bad habits um, do come up in normal uh, marital counseling, let's put it that way. And they are things that um, grate on a person's nerves because if you're sensitive, let's say um, some people might not notice, let's say the sound of chewing food, for example, but other people might be painfully um, sensitive to that sound. And um, if you're eating meals with a spouse, uh, you know, uh, every evening or many times a week or whatever, uh, that can become an issue. And certainly sitting beside or being affectionate towards a person whose breath isn't fresh and, you know, this kind of bad habit, these are real issues. Certain things need to be attended to. And often habits is one of them. Um, now, if a person made it to adulthood with a bad habit, this means that their parents, it's, it's not likely that the parents didn't try to cure the person of that habit. Okay, like, like if a person had a, you know, nose picking habit or something, almost every parent tries to get their kid to stop that. Um, or, you know, having trouble, like I said, having a bath or whatever. Every parent is on the kid's case. Very few people would have let that go for 20 years. <laughs> um, but somehow the parent was not able to uh, manage it. So if you're dealing with an adult who still has that habit, you can rest assured that it's a serious issue for the adult. And if we're coming from our cortex, um, rather than letting our wolf try to solve it, and as you can see from what I've said, um, the wolf is not a problem solver altogether. <laughs> so like if you have an issue that needs to be dealt with, um, your wolf is not going to be the one to help you. Your wolf is saving you from physical harm and that's it, right? So um, your wolf is subdued and you're using your cortex um, to bring the issue to light in the marriage. And sometimes um, you'll be able to impact on your spouse. But again, if your spouse reached adulthood with that habit, there is a reason for that habit that may be deeper than you think. For, Like I said, for example, about the shower and the teeth thing, um, it may be going with a neurological or sensory issue, not just a 
you know, a forgetful or a lazy, like we, that's our judgmental part, actually. That's the wolf that says, well, you're just not doing that because you don't care. Um, but the cortex can come up with a few more reasons why somebody would get that far in life and not want to please their partner with this very simple thing. <laughs> How hard is it after all, you know, to, you know, hop in the shower for two minutes and brush your teeth. It's not that hard, right? So if a person can't do it, there's something going on there. And when it comes to habits, I'm going to say that actually professional help may be necessary. Although we, we might think, oh, it's just a silly little thing. But no, it's probably not a silly little thing, okay? Um, so this may be the subject brought up in marriage counseling and an issue for an individual um, kind of treatment to cure it. It can be a very serious thing. That's all I'm going to say here about that. Great. Thank you so much. I mm -hmm. um, want to go ahead and welcome Esther. Welcome Shlomo, Alana, and Leah. Welcome to all of our new members. Um, as we're going to go ahead and close up here in just the next couple of minutes, I want to um, just reiterate again, if you have any questions left, please put your name and telephone number in. We will do our best to give you a call, help you register that way. Um, and if you're still joining, um, let me know, and I would love to be able to welcome you. So, Sarhana, before we close up today, um, if you could just leave us with uh, some words of <laughs> words of wisdom for anyone that's here that's still a little bit on the fence, not sure if this program is for them, um, oh. not sure if their marriage, you know, can be saved at this point. If you could just leave us with some words. Discouragement is understandable when it comes to marriage. Okay, where it can be, you know, sometimes people are. They've tried so hard and tried so long, sometimes tried with many professional counselors and so on. Um, I don't believe that we should ever relegate ourselves to a state of uh, despair, hopelessness, and whatever. The game is not over till the marriage is over. Um, so if you're, if you're still married, you should try um, in every which way possible to enhance your personal well-being okay as you do that um, the marriage will also be enhanced to some extent because when you're living in the state of lambness um, you're doing a lot better now um, you may already have great skills you don't need any more tools you've learned everything um, I would say that's amazing. I myself am not finished. <laughs> yeah, ask my spouse or ask my kids or ask my whatever. Like I'm still trying hard, okay? To I know a lot of stuff, but I have, um, you know, a wolf <laughs> lives with me, I'm patting it down. Um, you know, I'm a, a human being, therefore I'm flawed. Um, when am I going to get to the state where, oh, I know all this stuff and I don't need any more practice, training, insight, help, whatever? I don't think, uh, I'm not going to get there. If you got there already, then I'm going to take your class. <laughs> but I really just think that none of us get there, okay? I also have this lamb compassion. Like, I, I just think that this is a lifetime process and that there's no end to the learning, striving, and gaining insights and working on ourselves and our most important relationships. And um, therefore, I would invite everybody to to keep with me on this journey it's a you know all of our lives right until the very end till death do us part okay let's let's work together on this journey Thank you so much. Thank you for spending your time with us today. Thank you to everyone who uh, came on and spent your time as well from all over the world. It was an unbelievable um, group of people today. Really, really nice. Thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and keep the webinar open for just a couple minutes. You won't hear any noise or see anything, but I'll go ahead and leave it open just if you still need to put your name and telephone number in. You'll have that opportunity before we close up. So thank you so much. If you still have any questions, feel free to also email us at jewishworkshops at jewishworkshops.com. Or again, as I mentioned, just put your information into your chat box here. Thank you, Sarah Khanna. We look forward to seeing everyone next Wednesday. See you there, I hope. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.